Hello, my name is Dr. Shambles and you are watching Working My Ass Off. This is a series I created in order to get better at One Piece TCG, as I believe I am not the best player out there. In order to achieve my goal, I need you guys to bully me on my mistakes so I can take notes and apply them in future episodes. Hope you stick around and enjoy. Hello, welcome to the second episode of Working My Ass Off. <laughs> um, so I would just like to thank you guys for the support on the first episode and I think the second episode will be the most important because now we have the foundation of the first episode which is the one I'm I'm very proud of actually. I think it, it went well. Before we go into the notes that I took from you guys uh, from the last episode I'm gonna have to talk about um, first a little bit about the channel uh, second about the series uh, which is where I'm going with with the series some adjustments that I made and finally we'll go through the through the no My dog decided to start parking. Sorry. Uh, I'll go through the notes uh, After and then we'll go to the new games now Let's go through what I want to speak about the channel. First of all. I just want to say sorry. I believe the last three to four videos I made they I believe they kind of decreased in quality that's what I felt while I was editing them I still believe there was some valuable information that's why I decided to upload them but I just wanted to record this series for the longest time and so I I don't know I just try every little idea because that's what I wanted to get to I don't feel like this channel has an identity yet uh, I decided to update my profile pic on the YouTube and banner and so on you know Given a little bit more of a me feeling, that's why I decided to adjust. But for now, I don't know the identity of the channel. I don't know what content I want to strive for. For now, the only thing I know is every every single idea that I actually put much effort in does work. You guys do like it and I do find the enjoyment to record it. So for now, we'll keep it that way. But yeah, uh, sometimes some of those videos will come out. I didn't want to go on a strike again so to speak and not upload for you guys I do like to keep the consistency because also I again I enjoy recording a lot so yeah that's what I wanted to say about the channel uh, second of all is now second of all no second point are the this series uh, the adjustments I made to this series now there was a comment by Matox uh, I decided to point his name out here because he did say for me to get better with Red Purple Law, um, playing mirror matches are a need. I truly believe that, by the way. I did do that in Red Green Law. Uh, for Red Purple Law, I, I did answer his comment, which was... Um, I did not want to play uh, mirror matches because I do have insecurities uh, about my gameplay. That's why I created this series, so I can get better and provide for you guys better gameplay also. And so I... Because Red Purple has so many strategies, I was afraid that seeing many Red Purple laws will kind of cloud my mind on my playstyle and just make me change around deck style, uh, deck profile, sorry, and change around my gameplay a lot so, to the point that I, I'm just not consistent with my own gameplay, like with my own playstyle. So I didn't want, I didn't want to mess up that too much, you know. So that's why I, I didn't want to go uh, for mirror match. But and this is where I want to get to. Um, the adjust adjustments I want to make to the series are We are going for the Discord ranked matches I decided to join them uh, The reason I did not do this in the last episode was very simple Because I did not know about it <laughs> I actually, as soon as I uh, finished editing the first episode uh, Luffy TCG uploaded a video on that And I watched it and I was like Okay, this should uh, solve many problems uh, with my recording uh, sessions uh, as you know from the last episode, I have uh, problems with time. Many times that I have uh, time to record are not uh, when the sim is most active. Uh, then there's people leaving uh, very early in the match. So I cannot take much input on that, you know. I just don't learn much from people just leaving at the beginning. And uh, yeah, I think that does, those are the two points. Yeah. Uh, so... With this, uh, me joining the Discord ranking matches, uh, I'll have to play mirror matches. Uh, I don't have a chance, obviously I'm not going to dodge the matches. Uh, so yeah, I think that problem is solved. For the people that want to see some mirror matches, I'm just going to have to play them. 
Uh, as for the recording sessions, people will not leave as much because it's ranked, um, so to speak. And, um, and yeah, most of the time, even on low activity uh, parts of the day uh, where people are not playing so much on the sim, ranked is somewhat still active. You can see many people in queue uh, where when you are on the Discord. So I can see some right now playing. Um, so yeah, I think that this solves a, a lot of problems. There was something I wanted to say, wait a second. Oh yeah, uh, I just remembered. Uh, when uh, when I go through the notes, I would just like to know, uh, this part of the video before the gameplay, the gameplay may seem very boring, um, but I believe this is where the, the series will shine the most, is where I, when I go through the notes that I took from the last episode so if you did not see the last episode i know it's an hour long this one will probably be even bigger <laughs> so yeah um i i would um uh ask you guys to see the last episode so you guys know what i'm talking about here and i truly believe where the series shine is when i go through the notes that you guys gave me and i took uh some myself i'll get to that and then uh, we'll see how that affects my gameplay on the matches from that episode, uh, the way I adjust. Now, uh, for the notes, I would like to say, I did put uh, shoutouts on the names. I'm not gonna edit much of the episodes. I think this is too long to edit uh, as much as I would like to. So there's just been gonna be cuts here and there. Um, but there are shoutouts. I did have uh, some comments that were shouted out by people people did tell me but because i already had them in my edit while editing and after i rewatched the video uh, a second time i i took notes myself and some of that uh, some of that people shouted out and since i already had it in the notes i decided not to shout it shout them out um still i believe all of you guys are here because something happened which is i accidentally lost the file of the notes and I had to take everything again uh, because there are some notes here that I took myself that people did not point out in the video and some of my thoughts and then there's something that you guys just told me so I decided to try and shout out as many people as possible but for future episodes if I do not shout you out and you did told me something and I say thank you and whatever I, I'm I'm just sorry it's just it's uh, this took a lot of time, the, these notes. <laughs> so yeah, this is just a way to save time. Let's now get into the uh, points that I took notes from. So first game, which was an NL lost. I'm just gonna read the note and I'm gonna give thoughts on those notes. So I don't lose myself here. So Matt Majeri, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Uh, I should have mulliganed cause I had four Sanji. So should mulligan to get not only the Sanji, since probability is high because he's at 4 copies, but also a more optimal hand with more ramp. So, uh, right at the beginning of the game, maybe I should have mulliganed because I did have the uh, the 4 uh, Sanji 2k right here, as you guys can see. In case you don't know, this is a very good way to counter an L. So, normally when I see this in hand, I keep the hand. But what Matt Majari, I'm very sorry again, said is since i have four copies of him if i mulligan i'm still gonna have a good probability of getting him in hand and some more uh, donorman because i did not see um, many on my uh, starting hand so i'll try to do that thank you so much i don't think unfortunately that's what dictated the game obviously my misplays was what dictated the game but i'll keep that in mind thank you so much next is uh, shambles uh, tcg uh, I, I do have a timestamp here, which is 1319. Um, should I've used Promo Law to decrease Shura to zero and use Fire Feast to kill Shura while getting Sanji low enough for my leader ability? So, this play he had um, Shura uh, rested and he had a, a blocker Sanji up, and I had a Promo Law and a Fire Feast. I act I'm actually very surprised he was the only one who called out this play. And this was obviously the most optimal play. Um, I was al already at two lives, so the Fire Fist can KO someone that is at zero power. Power. So I could, and I have exactly six done. So that means I could play exactly the law. Then I could play the Fire Fist and then use my ability and 
uh, ramp up Dawn while building even more board. I absolutely agree with this. I was actually very surprised that I did not see this such... It's such, such an obvious play when I look at it now that I know. Um, and uh, I was very surprised nobody called on it besides him. But yeah, this was... I took everything... I would have took, took everything from him and I would build much pressure. So yeah, that was incredible. Uh, that would have been a really good play. Not only that, um, what I did, so you guys know the context, I pretty much just swing on Shura because he was rested and then I just took out the Sanji with the promo law. Uh, I put promo law, take away the Sanji and then uh, did the ramp up. This could, if I did what uh, Shambos TCG said, I would have uh, had another attack for life, which would be obviously better because it's yellow and you need to finish the game as fast as possible. So thank you so much. Next is uh, Kitsunix on 1459. Uh, use Gamma Knife instead of Fire Fist and Gordon. Um, I actually have some thoughts about this. Uh, so I used Fire Fist and uh, Gordon on uh, what I believe was a uh, Lily. I believe she was a 7 cost Lily. And if I just used Gamma Knife, I would have uh, put her down to 3 uh, K power and I could just use my leader ability. Take her away and then build board. Now, the reason I'm still against this, <coughs> sorry, the reason I'm still against this is because I would have lost four dawn and regenerated one dawn. I think I only had the Beppo in hand. I do not remember very well. I actually still that was a misplay what I did. I did see that and I had the, the notes. Um, but here's what I uh, I'm, I propose here. I actually believe the best option was promo law and Gordon. We still used to cart, but would build board and therefore pressure for next turn. So I did use, uh, I did have a promo law, and I believe putting promo law and garden would take away the 5k exactly, and then uh, I would have the advantage of not only not taking away as much dawn because I would take uh, three dawn and then regenerate one rested dawn with Beppo, uh, I would still have much more board thanks to building with promo law. Um, so I will have much pressure for the yellow matchup. So I believe I would still lose two cards, but I would build much more pressure and I think this would be the most optimal play actually. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Anyways, uh, Fire Fist should have just left, been left in my hand. So yeah, very bad misplay from me. Uh, next is Amiel Mamariel at 1828. <clears throat> use Promolo and Gamma to take out Yamato and then use the second part of, of my ability to still play the blocker low like I wanted. Uh, absolutely. Um, it's I believe it's this play actually uh, because it's very funny. Because in, if you guys see the episode, if this is the actual play that I'm thinking about, uh, again, the episode was uh, kind of long ago. Uh, I do say... Uh, before I kind of do the last two attacks and pass turn, I say, oh, I just got an idea. And then I, I realized I can't do the idea. The idea was exactly this. I remember that, actually. I remember, oh, I fucked up. <laughs> That's pretty much what came to my mind. Um, I should have done that because what I did was I played the blocker and I played uh, paid four dawn um, to play the blocker. I could have just, you know, decreased, take something away and play the blocker anyway. Or I could have used... My dawn was very badly used because I played that blocker law. I could have done much more uh, with uh, by just attaching Dawn and maybe make making better. I don't know. Anything was better than what I did, pretty much. Um, so yeah, I, this did came up to mind as soon as I made a misplay. I just did not call it out during the game. And I was like, oh fuck. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I'll. I need to. Uh, I do have some notes uh, in general, not in the specific games. Uh, these are the things that I'm going to try to adapt into my playstyle. So I get better, but one of the things I'll just call it out right now is I am not good at dawn management when it comes to attacks and using my leader ability with those attacks. Sometimes there are very simple plays where I could just attach three dawn to my leader, swing AK, take those three dawn, take something away from field and build board. Sometimes that's the best play and for some reason I just don't do it. Uh, I don't know, I just don't attach dawn uh, for some reason. That's a problem I have. So yeah, thank you. Now, this is something I have uh, from my own. Late game, attaching Dawn and then using uh, uh, using those attached Dawn with leader ability to build board can be a way to try and finish game while still playing safe with the board building. Uh, this is 1938 where I did this misplay. 
On the play itself, I could have done more powerful attacks and then take away Dawn to still put the blocker for protection. Even if I didn't finish that turn, my opponent would not have cards in hand to play protect himself from uh, play slash protect himself for the next turn anyway. And at that point, trying to save Dawn for a leader ability is not as necessary because the bodies on the field are too powerful anyways. So might as well make board and then use as many attacks as I can. Could have also played promo law with Gamma Knife. Um, so, so yeah, that's the uh, the play itself. Again, this is this the reason why this is very um, close to the Amiel um, uh, Ma Mamaril. Sorry, uh, comment it because this happened again where I did not attach Dawn and did not swing bigger numbers to take away more either lives or cards in hand. And again, I can just attach Dawn and take away the Dawn to build board anyways. So I need to use that more often. I need to use my ability to not just build board, uh, to not just take away and build board. And sometimes the simpler just to use it to build board, it's the better way. Especially, again, uh, I do point out here in late game. Uh, Red Purple Law uh, is already uh, very weak on late game. And I'm a very bad player on late game. So... Again, these two combine, it's it's disastered, obviously. So I need to start using my ability more to that sometimes. So I'll try to do that. Uh, okay, late game, not attaching Dawn was super stupid. Okay, this is the same thing. I Again, sorry, I, I lost the note, so I just used every single thing I had. So yeah, again, this was the same thing. This is more in general, yeah. I remember at the time I didn't want to spend Dawn, I knew he would probably take the life anyway because of leader effect, yeah. And I can regenerate lives, still maybe just making sure I would either take lives or uh, cards in hand would have been the better play, so yeah. Uh, set ga second game, which is was against the uh, purple Luffy. Now, um, there was not many people that uh, called out on this game, because this game, I'm gonna be honest, I just got the very perfect hand. And the variant that Purple Luffy was using was a variant that's focused on late game. Uh, I do know there are two popular variants on Purple Luffy. One is uh, you play Polly and Magellan and you try to go from uh, uh, mid, mid to late game. Uh, try, try to build momentum over that. Uh, this does make your deck more unpredictable. Because uh, your own deck more unpredictable if you're playing Purple Luffy. Because you, you cannot predict as well. Uh, how your game goes uh, through there because there's too many cards and the variant my opponent was using was the late game uh, variant which pretty much only focus on late game so you try to get to late game as fast as possible and if you manage to reach uh, that point you are pretty much unstoppable again it's a pretty game big gamble uh, against uh, red decks uh, like mine which uh, are powerful early and mid game so yeah we just had an advantage there there was a play uh, people called out, I think it was Shambles TCG, I'm not sure, which he, which was at the very end of that game, I did not swing with Kid uh, and I just left Kid up. In the episode I said it was because I wanted to bait uh, Kaido to take away Kid and I did not have a blocker. Sure, it, would have, it wouldn't have mattered because we just have too much board and we had already won right there and there. But I should have swung with Kit to take away the last life or take cards in hand. Because he probably would have just uh, played the, the Kaido anyways and take away the Kid. And the Kid would have much more value if I just swing with it the, in the turn before. So yeah, that was the misplay that people called me out. Uh, thank you so much. It did not matter. Again, we kind of stomped that. But I did take a note here, which is abuse the blocker law bluff. Maybe this will be good to try and take small wins. If they block, that's a resource they cannot use for the turn. Cards in hand could be a resource either. And a 2k counter card taken away or a 1k, card, 1K, card, uh, 1K counter card that would be used to build better board. Even a free block has value because I can attach on and swing... Uh, 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 can attach on that I didn't use, swing over it and use my leader ability on other cards perhaps. Or even to build pressure against other matchups. So yeah, I'm starting to use this more. I am, uh, for some reason, in my mind, I, I do not count their cards in hand and I need to. Not only because blocker law is a thing that I can use, but because of the bluff of the blocker law. People cannot really gamble on whether I have the blocker law or not when I have six cards in hand and I swing for life. They cannot take that gamble. 
because it's either a card that they choose to, to take away from hand or it's two random cards that can uh, hurt much more. So I'm going to try to take this into account and actually actively think about it when I'm playing. So yeah, this was the note I took on Purple Luffy. Third match. Um, again, um, sorry, I'm out of breath. Uh, Matt Majeri is set use Sanji ability on the deploy uh, to instantly dodge the Gadatsu play from the get-go. Um, yeah, I did not take the Gadatsu uh, play into account uh, up until the, the moment he played. Pretty much when he was playing, I was going to call it out. Uh, and he, he came at the same time I called it out. So yeah, I took a little while to, to predict that play. And uh, a good way was to just use the Sanji ability um, there. Uh, someone point pointed out that I got surprised because he used Thunderbolt to take away, to take him away right away. Uh, yep, absolutely, that took me by surprise. But I do have uh, something in mind. Uh, I do take some positivity from this play, which is playing around Gadatsu was not as necessary. Made the play more predictable, actually. Example: Blue Black Sakazuki, where I can build board to bait out board wipe cards. This usually takes 2 to 3 cards for 1, 2 or 3 cards on my board. Can use it on other matchups. Uh, so yeah, so... The fact that he did not play Ohm and play Gadatsu made the play more predictably. Uh, and he, he made it he made him build less board than with Ohm. Uh, this does help me because I can take away all his attacks much easily uh, with my leader ability. So, uh, although it was still a misplay, I'm, I'm not running from that, I can use this as um, as a way to predict my opponent better and just bait out cards that I know that I kind of dead uh, in my hand or something like that and play around that and make their plays more predictable. So, it's something that I, I can use uh, too, uh, in my advantage. So, <clears throat> now here comes another misplay. When I took away Gadatsu, I should have just put a Beppo, Fire Fist, Take away and put another Beppo uh, for more darn region, mid to late game. And save the 2k deplete from, more, from law for later. Um, so I should have just used the Fire Fist. Take away the Gadatsu, you know, make a swing with leader or whatever, maybe a 6k leader. Take away 3 Dons, take away Gadatsu and then just play Beppo and play another Beppo with the ability. Because I had matched on on my... On my field, so I could have done this. I could have played a Beppo, a Fire Fist, then play another Beppo, and I would have got so much more the Dawn Regen. Uh, so yeah, I should very big misplay on my behalf. A, a lot on that episode were so yeah. Uh, I did take note. I had three Beppos in hand, two Event Law, one Fire Fist, and some other card that I don't remember. So yeah, I had three Beppos in hand. I should have played one Fire Fist. Play the uh, take away Gadatsu, play the other one, and I would have had so much Dawn Regen and so much board, anyways. So, yeah. Now, 42 53. Um, after the first Yamato drop, should have attacked with 5k like I did, but then drop the Kid Blocker and take away Blocker so I had a clear swing. He had a Brulee, by the way. So I can uh, have a clear swing to life. After or not play kids since I had many lives and just make bigger, bigger attacks. So I could either just um, play the kid, take away a blocker and make a clear swing. Or I should have just uh, swing bigger numbers because I had so much lives it would not matter if he took some, some more lives next turn. So yeah, pretty much that's it. 44-47. I accidentally did not... <laughs> I did not organize this, this was before. I say she could not take away my kid blocker with Yamato. Oh yeah, yeah. this was just uh, me. I need to get this uh, to my head. Uh, for some reason I called out she could not take away uh, my kid blocker because uh, I was at four lives. Actually, I was at three lives. No, I was at four lives, exactly. And if he played Yamato, he could not take away because kid is at five cost. I forget that uh, Yamato is the conjunctions of my uh, life cards and his life cards. And he had, I believe, he had two life cards, so that makes him um, be able to take away a seven cost or more. So my kid was in range of Yamato, and for some reason I just take that out of my head, I just believe Yamato has the same effect of Gadatsu, which is not uh, true. So yeah. Uh, 47.50 
um, on the third match, obvious misplay on the law and Otama drop on Katakuri. Now, obviously people called it out, I originally uh, was not going to put these notes, this note here, here because it's, it was obvious. Uh, but the reason I decided to add this anyways is because of what I have here next. Kill the game with such misplay. I believe the game was somewhat salvageable up until this misplay. This might just made every single piece of, piece of hope just go away. So yeah, I believe this misplay, this obvious misplay was such a... Uh, was what killed my game. I think it was somewhat salvageable uh, up until then. Now, um, here is uh, Guanpa and Agar. Uh, they both called out this, which is should have predicted the category on play abuse with the Shira, uh, Shira Hoshi and tried to stop it sooner. Um, although, again, I do have a note here, although at that point the game was almost pretty much lost. Yes, um, the, although the game was lost, uh, when I was uh, uh, re-watching the, the video, not editing, actually that went through my head when I was editing, but when I was re-watching the video for the first time, I realized I should have not uh, let this combo go <laughs> as unpunished as it did. Uh, he was recycling his hand and getting too many 2k counters into his hand, so yeah, I should just take her away, maybe just sacrifice 3 Dawn, 3 active, if, uh, three active Dawn, whatever, and take her away so there's not this abuse. Because he did have two categories, which made him being able to to abuse this combo even more. Because if I took the, the category, the first category, he would drop the second category. I already know he had two categories in hand, by the way. So yeah. Now, this is a call that people said on the Sakazuki match. Um, although Sakazuki did not go uh, for uh, a full-on game, he actually scooped very early on. Um, so I... I did not take any notes from him, but people still call out some things, and this is very important. So, again, Matt Majari on Sakazuki match, 24-38, uh, instead of deploying Zoro and attacking, should have deployed Searcher Law and then play Sh Shashin Penguin. This would dodge any possible cost depletion on the Shashin and dodge the Hound play, where Shashi would be taken out and Zoro would after be taken out with an 8k attack onto him. With Searcher Law up, and not rested like Zoro, I would still have one body on board, which is in the long run, makes it better. Um, yeah, absolutely. I actually, uh, last night before I went to bed, I decided I went against three Sakazukis and I won against all three by doing this, actually. Um, I had Shashin Penguin in all of those hands, so yeah. Uh, and I managed to play a three cost. Most of the time was actually Zoro Juro and not Searcher Law. Uh, there was uh, one of those games was actually uh, Rush Zoro and I did not attack with Rush Zoro. Um, so yeah, this is a very optimal play. Uh, thank you so much. I I already am implementing this in my playstyle. Thank you so much. It really does help into the Katakuri matchup. Uh, something I have here, which I will talk about uh, later, is play Zoro Zoro at the beginning of match will actually bait out removal cards. People told me this. Uh, because I said Zoro Juru is a dead card on um, against Sakazuki. Although this is kind of true, still uh, this goes in correlation with what I said about the about the Gadatsu play, which is kind of play into their removal, so it makes their play their plays more predictable, and then I can play around them and kind of one up on them because I know what they're going to do. So yeah, Zorjuro can have some value on that, uh, even baiting out some predictable cards, or doing this play that you guys just told me about leaving him up with Shashi and Penguin, and then he'll probably get removed, but I'll still have Shashi and Penguin. If they don't have cards to remove any, well, then Zorjuro stays and gets even more value. So yeah. Now, I'll go to the notes that I have after every single game. This is more generalized notes. So, I still believe both of the NL matches were a loss, even if I played to perfection because of the simple nature of the matchup, but still, the misplays cannot be forgiven and need improvement. Uh, need to watch out for countering, uh, for countering early game against yellow, because those counter almost do not affect, or affect uh, late game, uh, or matter late game, so might as well try to counter sometimes on early mid game, on early mid game. Watch out for starving technique. So, I understand, especially on the third match, uh, which was the second game against NL, I understand I had the possibility to 
to win that game in specifically, actually. Um, but I also believe that most of the time I will lose because of the nature of the match. And now does counter red purple law. But again, uh, because I did put up a fight against them, automatically means that I did stand a chance and I could have won if not for the misplays. I just put it this here to kind of shout out that the matchup is not favorable um, for red purple law. But yeah, I could have won. I just made a lot of misplays. Uh, for the countering, uh, little notes. Uh, yellow puts up too, too many big uh, bodies late game. So I will not be able to counter them late game anyways. So sometimes against an L, not category. Against an L, I should maybe try to counter a little bit early in mid game. Since on early mid game, it's 6k swings or 5k swings. So those are counterable. But 9k swings, 8k swings just start going, uh, are too big for me uh, on late game. So yeah. But I need to watch out for the starving technique because they can see me uh, countering a lot. And then they just go for the starve even better. So yeah, that's why I took this note. Out of practice made me not think clear on my place as much as I should. Made a lot of rush, rush decisions. Although there were times that I took my time on plays, but when it probably mattered the most, I did not think things through like I should. This comes to math on Dawn management and attaching Dawn for attacks management. There could be times that good math on Dawn decide the game and I just completely ignored it. I did feel that in game my head and thoughts were fuzzy and I should have not ignored the signs my head was giving me. So I should just take my time for plays, this comes especially late game. Red Purple Law is already weak on late game, add that to my weakness as a player not thinking clearly on late game is a perfect formula for disaster. For disaster. So yeah, um, I, I do have some, this will not happen now on ranked, hopefully, because I'm so afraid that people leave that sometimes I take rush decisions. Um, uh, because I'm afraid that if I take too long they just leave and I just get, I don't get anything out of the, out of that, out of that game. But I just need to adapt, I just need to take my time and just just take my time. Just do try to see through every single play I can do and so on. Um, uh, my head and thoughts were fuzzy. This little note here was because sometimes on late game I, I made rash decisions and it felt like my head hurt. Um, I know this sounds very weird. Um, I don't know, it felt weird in my head. It felt like I was getting dizzy. Um, I believe this was my gut in my head telling me that I just made a misplay and I just made a rush decision where I didn't need to. So there's some salvation on me because my head, it, my subconscious is kind of train, trained. So even my subconscious sometimes knows that I just made a misplay. I need to listen to my subconscious a little more and just take my time. But yeah. My, my head getting dizzy was something that I felt on some uh, on the NL matches, on some decisions that were rash. Especially on the first uh, NL match because I made many rash decisions there. So yeah, just I need to take my time so I don't get this feeling. Because this is the feeling of me realizing I just made a misplay. On the last game I was getting super exhausted and that could have clouded my mind a bit and influenced my bad thought process on late game. Uh, yeah, fatigue could influence my, my very last game. Um, so yeah, this is just a note. Obviously, uh, the misplays cannot be excused. And I need to play better. This is the last note, finally. <laughs> Don't play so passive with blocker kit. Watch closely the situation at hand and swing or block if possible. This was already a, a problem. Now, uh, this note kind of has a continuation. But yeah, uh, this was called out on uh, Purple Luffy when I did not swing with kit. And I already know my problem with kid blocker is I leave kid active and I just don't do anything. I'm super afraid of losing him uh, because I really love his ability of regenerating one dawn. And most of the time I leave him passive. I need to start using him more actively. It just like sometimes making a free block with him. It's great and I just don't do it. So yeah, I just need to be more, be more active with him. This goes in correlation with something else, which is should look more at the cards in hand and the field before making a decision. Should also think longer before I take a card, a card to hand from a search. Don't be afraid to take my time and if people leave, so be it. Maybe try to explain better. Oh yeah, sorry. This is uh, one last thing, sorry. Um, I already talked about a little bit about this. I need to take my time. 
Uh, this goes in correlation with Blocker Kid because I leave him uh, passive so much. It's because I don't look at the board and my hand properly. And I need to do, do I need to do it so I realize that the kid is there is there and I use him more actively. Very last thing, maybe try to explain better the matchup before the games begin. Their usual playstyle, combos and so on. This is just for you guys to understand my mind a little bit and can help me a bit more. That's just it. Holy this I know I, I did warn this uh in my uh pinned comment that I already had an essay on notes. But yeah, finally. I got through them all. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going through games. Or uh, finally, uh, I'm using this the same deck profile. I did enjoy this deck profile, so we'll keep it. I'm gonna try the the joint QE for the very first time. Hopefully, there are not there are no problems. All right, this is the first game. Okay, I'm very nervous. It's against a category. Let's see. I'm gonna put some music. No, actually, no. We need to concentrate. <laughs> so there you go. I'm just gonna say hello. Uh, good luck, have fun. Okay. Hmm. Do I want to keep this? Actually, I'm going to mulligan. Okay. Not bad, actually. I know this is not as much variety as the other hand, but I'll keep it. I still need to know the most optimal hand for every matchup. I don't know it, by the way. So, yeah. I'm just gonna... Okay. To be honest, I'm gonna be super aggressive here. I know I have zeroed on, it's okay. I'll take it. There you go. He'll take. Gonna regenerate another Don. He won't take. And then I'll just make a 7. There you go. And there you go. That's fine. That's fine. You got a trigger. Uh, we already know that this is yellow. <laughs> So at 4 down now, I don't know if that was the optimal play to take away, but we did build much port. Uh, we're gonna let this go. Eight. We'll take that actually. Seven. Okay. Okay, 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 let me think now. Let's watch this from afar. We have Shashin Penguin for easy regen. We can use that. We also have Kit Blocker. One, two, three, four, five. We have six, right? So this leaves only one. If I use Kid Blocker, take away his pudding, this uh, pudding, this leaves two. Hmm. How many done does he have? Six. So he'll be at eight. He can play Katakuri next. If I play Promo Law, that's four and leave me two. Hmm. I can get some things away. I think the best thing to do is kind of go for board just this turn. So what I'm going to do is do this. Do this. There you go, and I'll just take away this, play the Shashin Penguin, and pass turn. This could be Katakuri, if not, yep, it's Katakuri, we'll just counter out of this. Okay, 
There you go. Regen? Nope. Just took my Promolo. Woo! Clutch! I was like, I, I want to play Queen, so maybe I can get the the Gamma Knife. Thank God. <laughs> we got the Gamma Knife. So, what we can do... We can... I want to put Kidder, Kid Block here. He has five cards. So, we put Kid Block here. First, we swing with uh, five and five. No, actually, no. We swing with five. Because with uh, Kid... We can make a six, exactly. Yeah, okay. So, we're gonna just swing five here. Okay, that is fine. Then we are going to do this. Use my... Take this away. Play Beppo for more Dawn region. And then we just swing for 6. There you go. He counters, that's nice. Now this could be a 10 drop mom. This is where the... Yep. Nope. <laughs> we just take that. There you go. There you go. Now the problem begins. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what we can do is I'm gonna start using my ability not to take away a board, but to build board. So I can take this away anyways. I wanna play this, by the way. Yeah. So we need five, right? We have seven, we use five, and we're gonna have uh, three done because we have the regen. So I'm just gonna make a 6k swing here. He takes another 6k swing here. He takes, and I'll just play this. We'll take away Searcher Law, there's no need for this anyway. We will attack 6k again. Ooh, he has many cards in hand. Okay, that is fine, that is fine. We're just gonna take it away, take this away. Um, just gonna play another blocker. Maybe I should be aggressive now, right? I'm just gonna play this. He took. Okay, you got a regen. He only has three cards in hand. We have much board. This is nice. We have two blockers. Okay. Two cards in hands. Yeah, I'll let this go. Counter have this. I prefer the 6k swing. Okay, let's see. Now, let's assume this is 2k, that's 4k. That's uh, 4k, 4k. Fucking hell, why am I so bad in math today? What the hell? 4-4, four, four, that's 8k, right? I need to go for a game here, because he'll just win next, next turn anyway. He'll take... Okay. And let's hope he does not have the the two case. Okay, GG, we got a win. GG. Good start, good start. Um, I I think we uh, we won, right? Okay. Uh, I sorry, I just 
I put it that I won. I think it was me who, who needs to vote. I think it's the winner. I saw them post a warning yesterday. That's the winner who should uh, put it. So I clicked on my name. Uh, so nice. We started off with a win against Katakuri. Um, I'm not going to lie. Katakuri is not half as bad as NL. But um, at least some of the uh, the things that I used was, as you can see, I used my Captain Keith uh, blocker more actively. I was very aggressive. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I did not need to use many of my power depletion because he was playing many uh, low, low power cards. So we kind of just went around them, kind of took him out to build even more board. So yeah, not bad, not bad. Okay, I'm at the uh, next game. Do I want to go first or second here? First, actually. Let's go first. Ah, I do not. I don't. I don't like this hand. Sorry. Okay, I prefer this one a little bit more. I, uh, guys, uh, sorry, I, I forgot. Um. Uh, please, if you guys have any idea of uh, starting hands against specific matchups, do please tell me. I Normally what I like to see in every matchup is Shashin Penguin and maybe a Trafalgar Law or Zoro Rush or Zoro Juro and some kind of power depletion. I like, obviously, this is the most uh, balanced hand and obviously this, what I'm telling you guys is pretty much a perfect hand. You always like to see Shashin Penguin and power depletion as long with the three cost cards. But yeah. Uh, if you guys know any specific hands on matches, please do tell me because I do not know them. I just know NL, you, you really like to see uh, 2k uh, counter Sanji. So, okay, he played. So, pass. Okay, we'll just attack here. Nice, nice, actually. Uh, let me just six. We'll take that actually. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry that I keep. Uh... So that's five. We have five. So first of all. We'll take one Gamma Knife. And I will just attack with this to get the search. Get this. I have eight cards in hand. Let's see. He can play Blocker Kit. I know. Uh, blocker Kit, sorry. Blocker Law, I know. It's a gamble I'm willing to take. <laughs> oh, did he counter? I don't know. I did not see if he counter or not. Play this. I know I, um, I just decided to build boards. I think that's fine. Uh, okay, you got the done. Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. Okay, no blocker law. If you really use multicolor, look at the top three cards of your deck and add one and then place a return. Okay, okay, that's fine. Sorry. You know what would have been perfect uh, next turn? A uh, promo law. <laughs> promo law would be nice. Okay, he picked a card to draw. Wait, you don't uh, then? Oh, it's just one card, so he does not have to reveal it to me. Okay, that's fine.
He's probably gonna attack here. There you go. I already knew that. So, oh, I almost fucked it up. Actually, I'll take away the other queen. There you go. No problem, love, but Garnon is fine by me as well. Okay, so this, we should... Obviously, we're gonna take away. We just got Garden. And I wanna play Zorojuro. Or another kid, actually. He's gonna play uh, Rush Calder next turn, probably. He's gonna be at 10 on. I can put a lot of pressure here. Maybe... I'll play another searcher. Because if you can get this search going, it's insane. So maybe I'll play another search and just leave Zoro Juro for now. Uh, because we're gonna have Beppo. So I'm gonna play Searcher uh, and Gordon. And I'm gonna use the effects to take away his ulti and play Beppo. He's probably gonna play around my... Uh, blocker law? <laughs> because I do have blocker law in hand, so he's just gonna play around it. There you go. Uh, so, uh, another 5 attack. There you go. We'll make a 6 attack. There you go. And I'm gonna swing with this as well, because if he plays the uh, Kaido, this will not get as much value. Ooh -hoo -hoo -hoo! Okay. This is fine. We'll just do this, 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 this. Take it away and just play as we want it. There you go. <coughs> Probable uh, Kaido now. Nah, mate. I am sorry. You're gonna have to play. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Probably not gonna do anything besides just attack. So we have five. We could make uh, five five. Yeah, there's no way we can take this away, and I was not planning. So we can make one two. One two. Maybe we'll do many seven. We'll try to make two six swings. Six swings. Actually, we'll, we're just gonna make three seven swings, and then the rest will be five. We'll take Shashin Penguin. There's no need for promo law anymore. Okay, he took. I'll just make a 5k swing here. I'm gonna take you, actually. This could be handy next turn. There you go. You. That's fine, that's fine. I know, I know, I know. Don't worry, guys. He took. <clears throat> okay. I'll make a seven K swing. Okay, there you go. That's fine. He served as a blocker anyway. 
I'll be countering out of that, sir. There you go. He's gonna, he's gonna take one away. That's fine. He's gonna have another. Okay. So he has one. What can we do? Actually, this is pretty easy, no? Okay, he considered. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, GG. We won. Okay, we we got it. Um, guys, I'm 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 so sorry. I just got a call. I'm I'm gonna have to leave. Um, I don't I don't know. Uh, I'm very sorry. Uh, so I'm just gonna wrap the outro here. Uh, do please tell me uh starting hands for the matchups that you guys saw, and in future episodes, uh, I'll go through it. Uh, give me notes. Um, I'm very sorry. This is just two games. Uh, something came up. I uh, if you guys want. By the way, I'm just gonna uh, say this. If you guys want, I can make uh, more recording sessions, and then I'll just compile them all up in episodes, and then I'll and I'll just show you. This will uh, take my mind off the games that I played previously, but it will be better for you guys. So if you guys want, in case these uh, kind of things uh, happen, uh, very sorry again. Uh, so yeah, please do tell me, uh, subscribe and li like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and goodbye. So sorry, so sorry. Um, hey, editing uh, Dr. Shambles here. I just want to say I'm sorry again, and guess what? It ended up being a stupid reason, so I actually did not have to end the recording session. Do please tell me still if you guys prefer if I record many games throughout maybe the week, and we'll do an episode a week, and then, uh, you know, I'll just com compile them all up. Uh, in one big episode and on the next episode we'll still go over the notes. I am very sorry that this episode was more notes than gameplay. I know. Uh, hope the next episode will be different, you know, because we'll just go to the gameplay because there's not much gameplay in this episode and so on. But yeah, dude, please tell me. Maybe you can do like this. I can just... Uh, I'm gonna do live games, by the way. I'm not going to do... Um, I'm not going to do... Uh, voiceovers i need to tell you guys what i was thinking on that moment on that game so i need to record and be in the moment and talk to you guys uh, so yeah i'm not going to do voiceovers for this series something i forgot to mention uh, on the intro is i'm gonna have to stop for a while webcam um, duels i know i only uploaded one and it was a test one uh, the reason is uh, it's again i i record uh, my recording sessions most of the time are on are when people are not active on Discord, so it's very hard to find, and sometimes I I have to wait too much, uh, too long. Uh, another reason is I'm on uh, college break, so sometimes I just prefer to be with my friends and have a life. This is not my life, so yeah, sometimes I just prefer to be with my friends than being on Discord waiting for games to happen. So yeah, so sorry, and goodbye.